Councillor Atkins, do you wish to speak to your amendment? Uh, yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, so, uh, as I begin, I'll actually briefly summarise what would have been put in the other amendment, which I was not allowed to put, which is, uh, as I said to the, uh, to the Council in December, I wished the administration to identify some form of budget where they would avoid raising council tax by the full amount. Of course, they didn't and have continued to call doing so irresponsible, impossible, and all kinds of other names during the course of this meeting. The fact remains that since 2018, which I think is the relevant date when the Liberal Democrats took control of this council, council tax has increased by nearly 25%. And if the, uh, the track is followed in this budget of increasing it by 5% every year between now and 2028, it will represent a near 45% increase on the 2018 level of council tax. So that will be a record of 10 years, 45% increase in council tax. And I just simply do not believe that was justified. And so at the last minute, I tried to put together an amendment which would have not made the 3% general fund increase in council tax. It would have made the 2% for uh, passport into social care, but it would not have made the other 3%. I did not identify sufficient uh, savings because of a disagreement with the uh, Chief Finance Officer to whom I defer uh, over whether or not this council is actually making savings when the budget is in fact going up. So uh, what I would have done is reduced the inflationary increase that you were making across all portfolios by half. Count Councillor Atkins, could you yeah. please stick to the amendment that's been tabled? Well, isn't, isn't this my general speech on the budget as well, Lord Mayor? No. No, so I will get another speech uh, 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 apart from this. You just get six minutes to speak well, on your amendment. I'm speaking on the budget as a whole as part but of the budget party debate. leaders get unlimited time. But yes, making I know. An amendment. Th therefore, this is my budget speech, uh, my whole speech in the, the budget debate, and I'm contributing to the budget debate. But you get your six minutes to speak on your amendment. That's, that's how it is in the standing Will orders. I get another six minutes in the, six minutes in the budget debate? No, therefore, so. I can speak on any matter relating to the budget during this six minutes. And by the way, it should not include this interruption, which has been over a minute now. <laughs> Carry on. So, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, as I say, I would not have made the general fund increase, and I would have reduced the increase we are giving to adult, and social, uh, adult social care by about one million and the children's social care by about half a million representing less than 1% of the children's social care budget and about 1.5% of the adult social care budget. And in doing so, I would have avoided only a £2.8 million out of the, what I calculate to be £17 million this council's budget is going up, what is actually stated in, in the, chief, the finance officer's report as a £20 million increase in the budget this year. So my point was simply this, that at a time when the residents of Port Portsmouth are tightening their belt, I don't believe it is right for the council to be fattening its belt. And I understand the inflationary backdrop. I understand the blame my government bears. But as Councillor Madrick said, this is a local budget. And I locally do not believe in 5% council tax increases every year for the next five years. Um, turning now to the budget amendment you have before you, uh, and I wish to simply make the point that it was possible to avoid increasing council tax today. It is a political decision to increase the council's budget while also increasing council tax. And it is a political decision taken by this administration. My actual amendment relates to the Brandbury Park swimming pool. And I'm sorry to spoil Councillor Corkery's uh, political consensus, but I think he shares a lot of the same concerns I do. I'm just going a stage further. I should make the point that both of these amendments are personal amendments rather than amendments for the whole Conservative group. But the problem is, Councillor Corkery and, and members of the Council, that this year is the year that the spending will finally be done. Because up until now, we have spent money planning, preparing, downsizing, recosting, wasting money on Brownsby Park Sports Centre. And over the next year, 12 million, um, as I put it in my at least precise figure, 12, nearly 13 million pounds from our reserves. So funding that we could spend on other capital projects will be spent on this boondoggle of a swimming pool in Councillor Pitt's ward. We all know why it is in that park, where there is no parking, where there is insufficient space. We all know that as a result, the pool has got to a point where very few people, I think, will actually want to use it, where it's not supported by a sports hall, where it is, you know, a barely adequate sports centre. 
This was a knee-jerk reaction from the administration on realizing they had closed two swimming pools across the south of the city without any sensible solution. And it's a bad response. It is a waste of this council's money. I think, actually, if we look at this hard and carefully, all of us can see this is a waste of this council's money at a time when we don't have a lot of money. What instead we should be doing with the little money we have, with the capital funding we can put together, is we should be thinking about how we regenerate this city, how we really plan for the future. Will a swimming pool in 10 years actually make that much difference to the financial well-being and the residents of Portsmouth citizens outside of Milton? My suggestion is actually what would make far more difference is regenerating commercial road. And I believe, unlike I, I do not believe in many of this council's schemes, I do not believe in Tipner, I do not believe in Bransbury Park, I believe these are wasted money, I believe this administration will never get them off the ground, I do believe in city centre north. I think it will improve the traffic, it will improve the city centre, it will regenerate the city and spark increased investment in the city. But to get that off the ground, we will need capital funding. And it's not a time when it's easy to raise that in either the private or public sector. So I believe we need to be prudent and put aside funding ourselves. So I would take that 13 million and that uh, will uh, put 12 million of it, the amount that's coming from our reserves, aside, back into a capital reserve investment fund for future investment in the regeneration project we're planning in city centre north. That I believe is a much better use of uh, the, the money of Portsmouth people. I think those are simple proposals and I think they're very hard to disagree with. Thank you, Thank Councillor you, Atkins. Lord Mayor. Thank you. We'll now start the debate.